Morning, folks. Day Soap is brought to us from Shannon Soap. This one here is called Black Magic. It does have a bit of a uh, uh, citrus scent to it, but there's more to it than that. My nose not being the most reliable. Uh, I can I pick up the rest of it, but I just my nose can't identify what it is. It does smell, smell pretty good. You can uh, got a link down below for the scent description as well as uh, uh, if you're interested in picking up some Shannon soaps. This one here, I think it's like $11.95 for four ounces, which is a pretty good buy. Uh, as it goes for what's in it in the way of, uh, I guess you might say the goodness, uh, just going to name a few things that will probably, you know, interest some folks that are interested in this kind of soap base. It's got tallow, kokum, avocado, cocoa, shea. So you can kind of get the idea right there that uh, it, it's got some good stuff in there. Uh, at least for me, it does. Uh, it lathers up really nice, in my opinion. It, I have, for me, this kind of soap, I can lather up just like this. It's very wet. It is, uh, how can you say, almost drippy. Uh, it, it, for me, this is my kind of lather. Easy to lather up. Uh, as I'm lathering it in the bowl, should say fine accoutrements, lathering bowl, uh, it just, I could just tell by the way it's lathering up that this is going to be a very slick soap. My kind of base, in other words. I like this kind of soap. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to lather up. Watching it mature, it is uh, it is fantastic. Oh, I should mention that the uh, brush is a MAC Metalwork brush. And uh, this, I it, if he made more than one of these, it might have been a handful. But I think this might have been the only one. This is what the end of the brush looks like. It's got a synthetic knot. It's This is a aluminum handle. Uh, very lucky to get this one here. He's no longer making this sort of stuff, so it's kind of unfortunate. But uh, I was lucky to find him at the time that I did. Uh, it's it's a really nice br brush. I, I enjoy using it. Uh, that synthetic knot, I'm not sure what kind it is. I don't remember right offhand, but uh, in other words, uh, who, who made it, whether it's a whip dog knot or, or somebody else. But... It's a pretty nice knot. I've already put a hot towel to the face for my pre-shave pre routine and Paraso pre-shave cream there. And show you the bottom of the eye. I'm getting pretty close to wrapping this one up and moving on to something else. Uh, as it goes for the blade of choice today, this is something I have noticed if you're unfamiliar with sharp blades. Uh, there's like a sharp stainless steel, then you got the super chrome, and then there's the platinum. That's the three that I'm familiar with. I think that's the only three they make. Uh, as far as I know, all three are wrapped just like this. So if you should take them out of the tuck and put them together in a dispenser or something of the sort, you might want to be mindful of that because you're not going to be able to tell the difference in between one blade and the next because they're all wrapped in the same kind of wrapper. It's a nice wrapper. It's nice and thick. It's uh, uh, it. I like this kind of wrapper, but it's a. Uh, they wrap all their blades the same way. I have it in a shit Krona. This one here would be what we'd consider the early version. In other words, the first ones came out with the metal knob. And uh, this one here used to have the Schick logo there at the bottom. You can see that it's no longer there. The plastic ones, the newer ones, if you will, uh, have the Schick logo molded into the knob. And so that would be the difference in between the metal and the plastic, if you will. Uh, you'll find some of them, like this one here, does not have anything on the doors. You'll see some that will just say Schick. Some will say Schick Corona. Uh, different variations of it you'll find, you know, uh, as you're looking at them. They, um, as go, oh, I should also mention, yeah, I'll show them. Maybe you'll be able to see it on the camera. And maybe not. There's numbers, letters there on the bottom. And the, as far as I know, uh, that has to do with more of the manufacturing process, what plant or something of the sort. I, outside of that, it, there's not a whole lot of information about what all the lettering and numbering means. Uh, and they're not all the same, of course. There's different ones. So, <laughs> uh, like I say, who knows what all that means. <clears throat> I have a link down below that somebody did a review uh, on Shit Corona. And... Uh, the razor and uh, as well as some care for the 
razor or any razor as far as that goes. But the uh, one of the things that I did early on a few years back is uh, I had landed some vintage blades that were new, of course. And, uh, and one of them, I, I got a pack of uh, shit Corona blades. And, uh, of course, you know, it, the, how you see the better always gets up, you, gets you, you know, when you're, you're, you're wondering, you know, how does this blade, you know, perform? Is it, is it still any good? Has it lost some of its edge? And, uh, so I decided to go ahead and give it a try. It was awesome. Fantastic. Uh, it just, in a way, it was great to be able to try a vintage blade that still performed rather well. But then on the other hand, it's kind of sad because you know they have been in production for a while. And you wish you had more of those blades. And uh, it was just, you know, a, you know, a great shave. But on the other hand, it was just sad because, uh, yeah, no more of those going to be produced. Now, as goes for most uh, twists to open, especially of age, some may develop a uh, an issue with uh, staying <laughs> snug, <laughs> keeping those doors closed. So on a vintage razor, you might want to check that from time to time. I haven't experienced any of that with uh, any of my shit Cronas, but maybe I haven't bought the right one, huh? In the review, it does mention the uh, the plastic part of the handle. And for me, I don't find it being a problem as it goes for gripping it. But I could understand if somebody was looking for or hoping for what might be considered a more premium version of this one here. In other words, this would be metal. As far as I know, that was never made. I have seen a picture of an adjustable one that looks like this, but I have never seen one for sale. So it might have just been a prototype that they were thinking about. I don't know. Because uh, I would be very interested in giving it a whirl if I could ever locate one. But since they're that hard to find, I'm sure that if it ever goes up for sale, it's going to be quite a bit of money. <laughs> it won't be inexpensive. <laughs> Kind of like how uh, some of the uh, toggles are. They usually go for a premium price, upwards of $1,000. And I'm like, no, I'm interested, but not that interested. <laughs> That's definitely out of my budget. <laughs> but it was just, you know, something I th saw and thought I'd be interested to give a try if I could ever find one. Yeah, these... Um, these were basically, the way I view it, these were more or less made for the everyday shaver. Somebody just looking to get their shave on, that's what they were looking to do. A tool that does what it's supposed to do. I don't find, especially with this blade, Shark Platinum, that this is an aggressive shaver. It is, I guess you might say maybe a medium, depending on what blade you use. But it's pretty easy going shaver. Don't find the blade being overly aggressive. And if you're uh, on the shave on their nose, you might be able to see it. There's just a little bit of overhang on each side that somebody may have to pay a little bit of attention to. But it's a, uh, it's inexpensive when you find them online. I've been lucky enough when I do find them and decide to pull the trigger on one that you can pick them up for sometimes, you know, $20 shipped. They do go somewhat higher, of course, depending on what comes with it. Like, for instance, if you find one with a case and uh, maybe if there was any kind of packaging that went along with it and instructions or anything of the sort, that, of course, will run you a little bit more money, but... I think they're pretty nice shavers. And they seem to be, how can you say, plentiful. 
they started, I think the, the article mentions 1959. Uh, that I'm not sure if that was a re reference to the razor itself or the blade. But I have to say that the uh, availability over, what, the 1960s, I think they say going into the 70s, there's quite a few of them made, so there's plenty of them out there to be had. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, over uh, like the lifespan of, uh, say, like the uh, uh, Gillette uh, flare tips, for instance, in other words, it probably doesn't compare to that number, but there's quite a few of them made. You can kind of tell. In other words, the speed stroke, if you will, the speed of the stroke, that this is not an aggressive shaver. Aggressive shavers, I wouldn't be able to do that against the grain. I'd have to slow down just a wee bit. But it is a pretty easy going shaver. Easy to use in my opinion. I do like how it's tapered towards the knob. It makes it easier to hang on to when you're swirling around in the sink trying to rinse it off. I guess you might say the little knobs there, or nubs on the plastic, makes it easy to hang on to. I don't find that it's uh, slick or anything quite like that. I'm not a shower shaver, so uh, and that might be a totally different animal showering in the shaver with it, but it does mention in the article yeah, uh, not only cleaning as much as the soap off of that that you can, but you know, let it dry out. I guess you might say the combination of the two is not exactly the best thing on a razor, especially a twist to open. And as it goes for the three piece, those threads, you gotta keep them clean. Otherwise you're gonna run into issues eventually. Very smooth. Poche feel. This is where I feel like, you know, this kind of soap really excels is not only the ease of lathering, whipping up a, a, a drippy lather, if you will, a well hydrated one. Slickness is, I mean, it is really slick. And my post shave, in other words, my face feels really good. I mean, not only because of, you know, what the blade taking down the whiskers, but my face feels moisturized, doesn't feel dried out. Uh, and then if you factor in the fact 12 bucks for four ounces, that's a, that's a pretty good buy. Can't complain a bit about the purchase. I have um, one more that I have not used in the re <laughs> one of the reasons is that I'm not thinking about like how I did this one here. Floyd Black in Black Magic scent wise doesn't exactly match up, but I've been wanting to use Floyd Black, I've been wanting to use this soap, so I put them together and that's what I'm shaving with, and I'm probably going to have to do that with the apricot and fig. I don't think I've got anything that comes it hey, got something that kind of fits in the category but it's not a not exact scent by any means match a scent match if you will and uh i think i'm going to pair it up with a uh an aftershave from vanulay i've got one that's called uh reggae rum berry and uh it kind of when you smell the two, they smell the soap and you smell the aftershave. No, they're not, they're not the same. They don't smell the same, but they, to me, they fit in that category, if you will. In other words, you know how you might have a citrus uh, scent category type thing. Well, this one here, citrus slash fruit, however you want to put it. You kind of, they seem to kind of go together, at least to me, my thinking, which is, yeah, I know it might be scary for some folks. <laughs> Floyd Black. This is the aftershave of the day. It is hard to find. It's been out of production. I did find a website that, uh, I guess you might say, is European-based. It's not based in the States. So I don't know if they ship to the States. Uh, I know most of the time they won't do such a thing because it's aftershave, alcohol. And so keeping that in mind, if you're looking for Floyd Black, you're probably going to have to look for somebody that has made something a dupe of it, if you will. Uh, this is what the uh, restrictor looks like. It's just like the glass. No plastic in it or anything of the sort. Floyd Black, Floyd, I should say, 
Uh, the aftershave comes by the way of Spain. If that, if that helps anybody. This scent, it's a it's referred to as a masculine scent. Usually the going price for a container like this, it ranges in between $20 to $25. Uh, even though it's out of production, in other words, the price didn't get seriously jacked up on it. Uh, this was the first Floyd that I ever bought, was Floyd Black. And um, yeah, I do like this. It's a, it's a really, it's a manly scent, but it, it smells good. Uh, I, I would think that most folks would be okay with this scent, in other words. And it does, it smells fantastic. Had a great shave today. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy, stay safe, and smooth shades to you today.